Hi, I'm Kathy McDonald. I am the Director of Medfield Outreach. Hi, I'm Mary Haas. I'm the Substance Use Prevention Coordinator at Outreach and I oversee the Medfield Cares About Prevention Coalition. So Medfield Outreach is a town department and we predominantly provide a whole host of social services to the Medfield community. We were known as Medfield Youth Outreach for quite some time. So if people hear Medfield Outreach and, or Medfield Youth Outreach, we're all one in the same. What happened was we really noticed that we, we serve a lot more than just youth and it was a little bit of a misnomer for to be called youth outreach when we are really a service that is open to any Medfield resident. So in December of 2020, we went in front of the select board and requested a name change of Medfield Outreach. We have a new logo, we're doing some new branding, and so hopefully the community will see that and get to better understand that this is a service that is open to all. And we really are here and um, responsive to folks' needs. So we're really good at hooking people up with resources, finding, um, finding an answer to, to many issues and many problems to, a, to the best of our ability, not every, but, but many. And so I just encourage folks really reach out. No question or no need is, is foolish or don't be afraid. We are here that this is what this department is. It's for support. It's for help. It's for clinical issues. It's for needs-based issues. It's for prevention issues. We have our hands in, in a lot of things. We're, we're very collaborative in nature. And so while you'll hear about this coalition work that we do, Medfield Cares About Prevention, Medfield Coalition for Suicide Prevention, um, it's really all intertwined. It's really all about wellness and, and prevention and health and support within the community. So when I promote outreach, I also by default promote these coalitions and promote the schools and promote the food cupboard and promote Medfield Foundation because together we make our community stronger and many other agencies, which I didn't list. So I'm not trying to leave anybody out. Those services sort of fall into three main categories one being needs-based referrals, which is needs-based work, which means we help people with assistance to access financial programming, whether that's local or on the state level or the federal level, that's something we help a lot of folks with. The other thing we do is we provide a whole host of clinical services to, to people within the community, and I can talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. And then the third piece of what we do is what we call our prevention work, and the prevention work really com is comprised of two major coalitions that we are on, the Midfield Outreach is on the steering committee and provides administration. Both of those coalitions are initiatives of the Medfield Foundation. So we work closely with the Medfield Foundation and they are called Medfield Coalition for Suicide Prevention, which many people will see MCSP. And then the other coalition is Medfield Cares About Prevention, which I will let Mary speak to as she's sort of heading up and coordinating the Medfield Cares About Prevention Coalition. Medfield Cares About Prevention, also known as MCAP, is a community-based coalition in Medfield, administered by Medfield Outreach and an initiative of the Medfield Foundation. Now we are able to function in the way that we do because we've recently received a drug-free communities grant from the federal government. It was awarded to the town of Medfield. Yahoo! And um, many people had a hand in making that come, come to be. And so what that has allowed for is access to resources so that that means that I was able to be hired. That means we have resources for programming and skill building and training and all sorts of different things. You might look around Medfield and say, there's no substance use problem here. And that may be the case uh, generally, but it's important to note that we were awarded the Drug-Free Communities Grant for a reason. There was a demonstrated need. And so while it may not be on the forefront, you know, one of the things we know that uh, is that according to the 2018 Metro West Adolescent Health Survey, which is a regional health survey for high school and middle school students uh, that actually our, our high school use of alcohol was 1.5 times higher than the regional average. Uh, so I just wanted to pe have people kind of understand a little bit about why we were awarded this, um, this grant and why this work is happening in this community specifically. So Medfield Outreach does provide free and confidential counseling services. And so we have two clinicians, two full-time clinicians, myself and Chelsea Goldstein Walsh, and we are both licensed independent clinical social workers. In addition to the two of us, we also have graduate intern, a clinical intern who carries a small caseload herself. So we, we do provide and are able to provide individual family counseling as people need it. 
In addition to that, what we've found is that during the pandemic, the clinical need is such that people are having a really difficult time getting in with a therapist. So we, we developed drop-in hours. And, and how we found that helpful for folks is sometimes people aren't quite sure if they really need counseling, is their problem big enough to warrant weekly therapy? Are they making a big deal over something that's maybe not a big deal? Um, or maybe they're on a wait list for an outside clinician and that wait list is months away and they feel like they can't wait that long. So we really wanted to address that need, that sort of shortcoming of, of clinical resources for folks in the community. And one way we've been doing that is by offering what we call drop-in hours. And so the drop-in hours are like they sound, except for there is a little bit of paperwork. We do need a permission form because not all, but much of that drop-in hours are, are done over telehealth, which is a HIPAA compliant platform, much like any doctor's appointment you'd have, sort of Zoomy, but it's not Zoom, where we provide counseling over virtual. But we also can do it in person. We're lucky enough to have a big enough space, which allows for social distance counseling with windows open, proper ventilation, et cetera, at the outreach office. So what would that look like? That has looked like for folks um, reaching out to Medfield Outreach, which the, how you would do it is you could either call, which that phone number is 508-359-7121, or you could email medfieldoutreach at medfield.net and say, I'd like to make an appointment for your drop-in hours. The drop-in hours, we're giving guidelines to drop-in hours, but we'll really work with anybody around their availability. So right now, the drop-in hours that we have specifically for students is Tuesday, Thursdays, 2 to 3.30. Again, if there is a conflict, if there is some extracurricular activity or sports that conflicted with that time, we will certainly make something else work. And then our parent times that we have, well, not parent, I shouldn't say all adult, is um, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 to 11.30. And again, same rule applies. And what we're seeing is people calling, sort of um, asking, you know, is this something I should be concerned about? How might I cope with this situation? Or where do I go for this sort of help? Um, can you help me find someone who might do testing? Can you help me find a provider that might have this specialty? Or just, I'm thinking these things and this is how I'm reacting or coping with them. Is that okay? Do I need more help? Do I need more support? Um, it, I think people have found it really helpful. Some people will come once, some people will come two, three times. Some people then transition into a weekly appointment with us as we have space available. So our, our goal is to help people feel like they're not alone and they're not struggling and they're not suffering out there. And, um, and that's been the purpose of these drop-in hours. And I think that they've been um, well received and we'll keep them for as long as they're being utilized. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And it's when we really try to um, host and sort of bring a spotlight to reducing the stigma of mental health, increasing awareness about mental health issues, and really moving towards a world without suicide, trying to prevent suicide. And we are, last year, there was a lot of effort and time that went into planning a walk, which we hope will be an annual event. And we had to sort of, we had to postpone that due to COVID. So we are saying no more. We're gonna figure out a way to make this walk happen, whether it's virtual. So we have a group of folks that's on a little subcommittee, Medfield <laughs> Coalition for Suicide Prevention, and we're working on bringing that to the community. And so one thing I would love the community to know is please, please, please participate. This is something, this is one of our fundraisers that we really depend upon to raise money for some of our initiatives. And just to give this coalition a big um, round of applause is many people don't know, but the Medfield Coalition for Suicide Prevention works very hard to raise money to pay for the interface referral service. I, I'll just talk about it a second so everybody knows, because hopefully the more people that know about this resource, the more people will use it. But we raise the funds to pay for interface referral service, which is sort of like a concierge service for Medfield, any Medfield resident. And what they do is you can call the interface referral line if you are in need of a therapist and you work with a, a case manager about what the need is, what your insurance is, what time you might be available. If there's a preference or a specialty, you can ask for whether or not you get that, but you can sort of you provide as much information as you can about the area of need. And then that person goes and does the legwork for you to try to match you up with 
at least a couple choices of therapists within that meet most, or if not all, of those parameters that you set forth. And I think it's a super helpful um, service for most people that use it because when people are feeling overwhelmed and need that sort of help, the last thing they feel armed to do is to make 20 calls to find out everybody's full and nobody's accepting a, you know, a new client. Or, yeah, we found this therapist, but they don't take our insurance. And so it really is to remove some of that burden and some of that difficulty and some of what people feel it's overwhelming and just too much. So again, that's interface referral service. I would love to bring attention to the walk, which helps raise funds for that coalition, which pays for that service. So why should you care? That's why you, you should care, um, is that it, it provides a really wonderful service for this whole community. You've heard Kathy speak about the Suicide Prevention Coalition. And so the MCAP Substance Use Prevention Coalition kind of works side by side on, the, on similar things. Uh, we focus on increasing protective factors that would can keep a young person from using substances in the first place. And we look to reduce those risk factors that might drive somebody to turn to a substance. Um, and to do that, we used skills, uh, data, science, and really focusing on giving the youth of Medfield what they need. MCAP has a lot going on right now. I was hired about eight months ago, and actually throughout this whole pandemic, we have been still making moves, uh, virtually, but nonetheless making moves. Some of our recent achievements have been, uh, we completed a Medfield student survey in the high school and also in the middle school. So we got some data from, from the students about their mental health status at this point, substance use, and we're currently in the process of crunching those numbers. So more to come on that. Uh, we also completed a social host campaign. I don't know if you all saw it around town. Parents who host lose the most. And that was really to inform folks about the laws around hosting uh, with young people and, and alcohol and, and all of that. So you can find more about that on our website at medfieldcares.org. Um, so that was one of our recent achievements. Another thing we did is actually just a few weeks ago, we had 10 high school youth show up and come to our CADCA forum. And CADCA stands for Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America. It was a national leadership forum where youth and substance prevention specialists from across the country came together um, including government officials and all sorts of, of, of really, um, really powerful people uh, came to this, this forum and our youth got a real taste of what prevention looks like. They, they learned some skills and we're really uh, impressed with the way that everybody showed up for that and we're excited to see what comes next um, with our youth work. We are really super excited by some of the um, attention and energy that we're seeing from Medfield students, right? Mostly high school at this point, but I think that's because that's where most of our interaction has happened, but around prevention work. And we are really poised in a position to help those students develop coalitions, clubs, um, whatever they decide they want to do in terms of working towards the goal of prevention and wellness in the community. That's a super exciting thing is to see that there is tremendous talent and dedication and opportunity to work with the youth in this community. So I'd love to bring more youth to our office, to the, to the work we are doing, even outside of our office, not just within our office, for the community, by the youth in this community. That's really exciting. Next week, we have a program starting. Unfortunately, the deadline is already passed uh, by the time this is airing, but it's an exciting collaboration between Cultural Alliance of Medfield and Medfield Cares About Prevention, along with Medfield Outreach, and this pretty neat artist uh, at Medicine Wheel Productions out of East Boston. So that's a, an opportunity for high school-aged youth. You know, the other thing I just want to say that's kind of ongoing, or is definitely ongoing, is our monthly meetings. So our meetings are open to the public, uh, everybody is welcome uh, to attend. At this point, they're still virtual. They are the fourth Wednesday of the month from 4.30 to 6 p.m. via Zoom. So if you are interested in getting involved in any way, learning more information, you have a question about substance use or about you know its effect on the adolescent brain, something to that effect, please reach out. The best way to contact me is via email, and that is mhaas, H-A-A-S, at medfield.net. So there's two A's. M Haas. Um, that's a, definitely the best way to be in touch. Another really good way is through social media. Um, our, our handle is Medfield Cares, and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. 
we're kind of all over the place and we're looking for input. We're looking for um, really just increasing the community involvement with our coalition. So we invite every and anyone who's, who's interested. So it's kind of like all things lead back to us. So there's kind of a whole handful of ways to get in touch with us. And it all, like I said, uh, it funnels back to the same team of three, right? So there's myself and Mary Haas and Chelsea Goldstein-Walsh and our fabulous intern that we have from Boston College. So any of these ways will filter down to one of us and there's a really good communication in our office. The Town of Medfield's website, if you go onto um, that website, you can scroll down and hit Medfield Outreach. That will bring you to our website, which has some general information. We're in the process of really trying to look at that website and find out how to make it um, the best website it can be for pertinent information. And so we're, we're in the process of updating it. So while you can go there, um, know that that's, that's in process of being improved from our, from our standpoint. So that's one way. To reach any one of us, you can email medfieldoutreach at medfield.net. You could email myself, K McDonald, K-M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D at medfield.net. You could email Chelsea Goldstein Walsh, which is C Goldstein, G O L D S T E I N hyphen W A L S H at medfield.net. You can call 508 359 7121. Although I would encourage you to email um, because we're checking our email frequently. Um, sometimes the calling, it's difficult. We don't always get to the phones because we're tied up sometimes with clients, but our email is something that we check regularly. And then our websites, I would encourage everybody to check out our website. Um, again, as you, as you know, we're in the process of updating our websites, but our social media platforms is somewhere where we stay very current. Um, and again, I would encourage you to follow Medfield Outreach on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're on all three. Our Medfield Coalition for Suicide Prevention is more of advocacy and prevention, so it's not interactive. So while you are welcome to please visit that website, um, it's not something where we interact with folks. It's more of a resource base, and that is www.medfieldcsp.org. We both spoke today about a lot of resources that we have here in town, and I just want the community to know that while we are here for you, if there's ever a crisis or an emergency, I do want to leave everybody with just two phone numbers or two ways to get immediate support because while we are, I feel, responsive to the community's needs, that may not be true if there's a crisis like on the weekend or in the middle of the night or something. So I just want to point out to folks that Riverside Crisis, the phone number is 1-800-529-529. 5077 and that is a 24 7 you get that is a local crisis resource riverside crisis the other is i wanted to give people if they prefer to text there's a, um, a resource text it's called call to talk and what you would do is you would text this number 741741 and you would put c2t which is call to talk c2t to 741741, and that's 24 seven immediate help also. Someone will respond to that. So I just wanna make sure that someone has a resource no matter when they need it. We're really interested in speaking with you. This is a community coalition. So we want to do things for the community, with the community. We're specifically looking for youth. Um, we're hoping that, you know, we have a lot to offer, right? So uh, we just wanna make sure that people understand that we're here uh, what kind of what our goal is and that we're we're excited to work with people and get to know them.